As some of you know, I was at the Cenotaph yesterday in London for Remembrance Sunday. It's the first time I've been there for that particular, uh, shall I call it an event? Is that disrespectful? For that day. And I found it solemn, it was sombre, it was respectful, it was thought-provoking for myself, and it was very British. Of course, there were uh, apparently some free plasticine pro-Hamas counter protests i mean how would you counter protest remembrance sunday in london at the same time there were a few of them and they planned to disrupt the two minute silence with uh making a loud noise but thankfully nobody heard a peep from them and the fact that the free plasticine pro hamas lot decided to appropriate that day that one day that veterans and those currently serving the british armed forces have to remember our glorious war dead, I think it's disgusting, disrespectful and horrible beyond belief. I know there are worse things going on, but there we go. Now, when I arrived there early in the morning, uh, it was... There was a weird atmosphere in Westminster tube station. The place was crawling with police and you couldn't get into Whitehall to view this firsthand without first going through security, and it was quite heavy as well. I had myself, my rucksack and my wallet all searched, opened, looked into, rummaged. Of course, nobody looked into and rummaged me. (laughs) But I felt like a criminal, I I really did. I felt uh, like I was under suspicion for causing trouble, and I'm a veteran. But that's Britain today, unfortunately. I remember watching the Cenotaph when I was a kid. I mean, it's something that's happened every year all of my life and beforehand. And until recently, we didn't have all this security and police presence. People turned up to pay their respects and then went home or did their thing. But not now. People are scared. While doing my live stream yesterday, I learned as well in the chat that there was yet another murder in London. One killed and two injured. Thanks to a knife man and the authorities were quick, very, very quick to label it a mental health problem. Well, how do they know that quickly? And do we believe them? Well, can you blame people for not believing them? They said the Southport killer, the Welsh choir boy, so-called, had mental health problems when it transpired it was anything but. So, of course, because of that, people are going to speculate more now. And who do we blame for this? Well, it's the powers that be, isn't it? I watched yesterday as they all took their special places before laying their wreaths on the cenotaph, privileged people, people with power. And I was so hoping the uh, veterans would uh, turn their backs on Keir Starmer, but they never did. Of course, that was their choice, and I knew they wouldn't. The veterans in this country, they're not like that. Maybe it's because they have a bit more dignity and honour than the rest of us, and they lived in a world which they didn't have that kind of thing. They didn't do that. They didn't really show their displeasure back then. But still, it was kind of, it was like a sickening irony that these pensioners who gave everything to serve their countries, some with lost limbs, uh, loss of hearing, loss of eyesight, massive mental health problems through PTSD, thanks to combat stress, what they saw, what they did. Because what servicemen do, and women of course, it's not normal. And here they were, in their finest, with their berets and medals, And they marched past a Marxist Prime Minister who's just taken away their winter fuel allowance. So, yeah, Keir Starmer was telling them, thank you for your service, but freeze. And he wasn't even there for that. He'd gone back inside the big, posh, white, uh, Whitehall building, hadn't he, with the rest of them. I think it was just Prince William who stood there to take the salute and show a bit of respect. So, yeah, Britain is changing. It has changed. It's changed for the worst. There are certain social engineering projects in this country which are not working. It's not working out at all. Now, I saw a quote on X the other day. Again, I can't remember who the hell wrote it, but it's quite true. They said, and I quote, Never apologise for your ancestors to people who hate you, unquote. And I think I can add to that after experiencing what I did yesterday. With why on earth should we serve a government that wants to replace us? After all, the uh, London Mayor Sadiq Khan announced just the other day that he is planning to give free transport to illegal migrants in the city of London. Of course, by now, they're not illegal migrants, they're irregular 
migrants are now asylum seekers. And this is on top of last year, him handing out 54,000 free travel cards to friends and family of Transport for London staff. And yet our veterans still marched past the cenotaph to the claps and cheers of people lining the streets for them. I'm pretty sure if I get to that age and I'm invited to do so, I'll be wondering to myself, why did I bother? And I'm sure I'm not the only one either. And there we go, that's me uh, thoughts on the matter. Please let me know what you think in the comments as ever, and I'll see you at the next one. Take care, and Roger Trout. Hi, I'm Paz49, off that video you just watched, and I want to thank you all for all the likes, comments, and shares. But now, it's time to hit that subscribe button.